A lot of people might think CFPB is the worst way to repair credit. Actually, it's not. Probably doing it wrong. CFPB, in practicality, in theory, is the best way because if there is a problem that you have with the creditors, the bureaus, uh, what else? Who else is involved in this process? Basically, just creditors and bureaus. And then you, that wants to get your credit fixed. Well, if you have a problem with Experian, TransUnion, or Equifax, or any of the other credit bureaus, or just the creditors like Midland Funding, Exeter Finance, Toyota Motor Credit, Bank of America, or, or like the bankruptcy courts, saying that things are verified when they're not actually verified, well, the CFPB is your route to go. But you can't go too soon with the CFPB. I'm telling you guys, you guys got to dispute first directly with the bureaus. Whether you do it by mail, we do it online here. Whether you do it online, by phone, fax, whatever trick you have, all right? Because there's a lot of tricks out there. Well, if they're not working, that says one or two things. One, the creditor like legit verified the item and like you don't really have a leg to stand on. Number two, you didn't pay off your debts and you don't have a leg to stand on. The creditor is not going to give you any leeway. Number three, you just don't know how to dispute right. And you're jumping the gun per se. I don't know if that's the right term, but you can't just open up a CFPB complaint because it's some new trick. A lot of people that want to repair credit, just take a look at these. CFPB, 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 CFPB. Look at all these. These are all recent complaints that we've opened for our recent clients. Uh, you can see the month right there, the 17th, I think this is yesterday, and 17th. And the reason why we open these CFPB complaints is because it's the right time to open them. A lot of people in the credit repair space like to think that there's some new trick that's going to repair your credit. But you have to have a logical reason. Everything in credit repair is logical. It's not just because it's new or because you're excited and you want to try something new, it's going to work. You're hoping. You're like the guy that's playing poker. I like, you know, poker, credit repair is like poker. Imagine you're in the middle of a high stakes poker game, but instead of trying to win chips, you're trying to clear your debts. It might feel like holding a busted flush, right? Welcome to the game of credit repair, a high risk match where you're up against the false information embedded in your credit report. Similar to poker, your aim is to secure victory after victory until you've completely wiped out your adversary. Every win in this game moves you closer to a spotless credit report. Each dispute you raise, every negative item you remove is tantamount to winning a round of poker. And if you manage to entirely erase an item, that's akin to seizing the entire pot, a significant triumph that brings you nearer to your end goal. But remember, just like poker isn't purely a game of chance, but also a game of skill, the same applies to credit repair. Your initial moves need to precise and well thought out. Sometimes, it's wiser to begin with unclear disputes, comparable to playing your cards close to your chest. Revealing a flawless dispute letter too soon can be like exposing a strong poker hand before the flop. It might alert the creditors and make further more strenuous. Each round in poker serves a purpose, and so does each phase in credit repair. From the preliminary analysis to researching on the negative items, similar to the pre-flop in poker, to sending the first disputes and handling the responses from creditors, every step is integral. And the final negotiation round in credit repair can lead to mediation or arbitration, just like the river in poker. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could catch the dealer's tricks and flip the game in your favor? That's where our expert Andre steps in. He's our guru at credit repair, the cunning player who knows all the moves to claim victory. So, are you prepared to up the ante? So, how do you outsmart the dealer in the high stakes game of credit repair? Let's delve deeper into the art of strategic bluffing. Think of it like a game of poker. The initial steps in credit repair require a good strategy, a bit of cunning, and sometimes a well-placed bluff. In a high stakes poker match, you wouldn't show your best cards right off the bat, right? The same rules apply to credit repair. At times, 
It's more advantageous to start with vague disputes instead of exposing all your cards with a flawless dispute letter. But why, you may wonder. Well, going all out too soon like showing a strong hand in the initial round can tip off your creditors and make future disputes more difficult. For example, if you're disputing a late payment, try to question the date or amount instead of directly stating it's incorrect. This move is similar to making a small bet in poker, feeling out the situation without exposing your entire hand. It's not about lying or cheating, it's about being strategic. Also, the power of patience and timing should not be underestimated. Like in poker, you don't have to play every round. Sometimes, it's wiser to fold early and reserve your energy for a round where you have a better chance. In credit repair, this could mean deciding not to dispute a minor issue and instead on a larger problem. And let's not overlook the value of partial information. Rather than submitting all your documentation at once, consider providing it in stages, similar to slow playing in poker, keeping your opponent guessing and gradually raising the stakes. However, bear in mind that these strategies aren't a one-size-fits-all solution. The optimal approach will depend on your specific situation. Therefore, always seek advice from a credit repair expert for tailored guidance. Remember, the game isn't always about having the best cards, but how you play them. Equip yourself with the right strategies, and you're well on your way to outsmarting the dealer in this high-stakes game of credit repair. Next, we move on to the flop, where you send your initial disputes, just as you'd reveal your hand in poker after the first three community cards are dealt. You might use ambiguous wording in your disputes, questioning the validity of the negative items rather than outright denying them. It's like playing a poker hand close to the chest, not revealing too much about your strategy. The turn is the third round, where the creditor responds, verifies, or challenges your dispute. This is akin to the fourth community card being revealed in poker, adding another layer of complexity to the game. You'll need to navigate the creditor's response strategically, much like you'd adjust your poker strategy based on the turn card. So who's this Andre we've been talking about? Let's take a moment and get you acquainted with the man of the moment, Andre. This isn't just any ordinary guy, he's the credit repair maestro at Pinnacle. However, he wasn't always in control of this high-stakes game. Once upon a time, Andre was just an ordinary person, struggling in the world of credit, feeling like he'd been dealt a losing hand. But with tenacity, resolve, and a whole lot of strategy, he transformed his credit score from a complete bust to a royal flush. Now, Andre is the dealer at Pinnacle, aiding folks like you and me turn their credit scores into winning hands. For Andre, credit repair is not merely about luck. It's about comprehending the game, interpreting the cards, and knowing when to make the big play. And he has a roster of successful outcomes to back it up. Let's delve into one of Andre's success stories. Imagine this, a woman approached Andre with a dismal credit report. Late payments, maxed out credit cards, the works. But Andre, the credit repair virtuoso that he is, spotted a potential straight flush. He commenced with the preliminary analysis, scrutinizing and researching the negative aspects in her report. Then came the negotiation phase, where he put forth initial disputes, cleverly using ambiguous wording to keep the creditors on their toes. The subsequent rounds were where Andre truly made his mark, effectively countering every objection the creditors presented and supplementing his initial disputes with additional documentation when needed. The end result was not just a squeaky clean credit report for the woman, but also the knowledge and confidence to uphold her improved credit score. That's the impact of Andre's credit repair strategies. He doesn't just play to triumph, he plays to transform lives, to empower individuals to morph underdogs into winners. With Andre in your corner, you're not just wagering on a winning hand, you're wagering on a winning strategy. In scene five, we delve deeper into the mastery of Andre, the dealer of this winning hand. Unlike the usual credit repair guys, Andre is an artist, a genius, a master at his work. He has been in your position, engaged in the game, and emerged victorious. And now he's here to impart his knowledge to you. With Andre and his team, you're not just subscribing to a service, but adopting a strategy. They don't merely contest negatives, they go full tilt, devising a custom plan to challenge each inaccuracy on your report. 
They're here to guide you in playing your cards right, to change your credit score from a losing hand to a royal flush. Right, there's the pre-flop, the flop, and the turn in the river. All right, those are four plays right there. The pre-flop, the flop, the turn in the river, four plays. You have two cards. So those of you that don't know how to play Texas Hold'em, you probably should. I'm pretty sure most people know how to play Texas Hold'em. It's a very common game. If, if you haven't, then shame on you because you're going to miss the value of this analogy. But it's no different than being desperate going to Las Vegas and playing the slot machines and thinking that just because you want to make a lot of money and it's Las Vegas that you're going to win. You wanting to make money in Las Vegas and because it's Las Vegas and people flock there to get rich doesn't mean that you're going to get rich. It's the same thing with credit repair. You wanting to fix your credit and so many people with effed up credit flock to credit repair agencies. Those two things are not a prerequisite to repairing your credit. Neither is your desperation or your excitement or your anger or frustration. None of that. What is a prerequisite is actually you being educated of your consumer rights. I'll give you five of them. The Fair Debt Collections Practice Act, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the Fair Credit Billing Act, the Fair and Accurate Credit Transaction Act. And what else is there? Oh, the Equal Credit Opportunity Act for those of you of color, because this applies to people of color and even people that are not of color, like white. Let's show you some awesome results. You saw the CFPB complaints, right? Now look at the results that these complaints that we're sending get for our clients. So let's look at this one. Look at that, 35 points. 39 points on TransUnion and 24 points. But wait a second, oh, 30 items deleted. Wow, holy crap, that's a lot. Look at that. Oh, this update was from today. Awesome, we just pulled the report today. Pretty cool, let's scroll down, look at this. But I don't want to bore you guys with all this stuff that got deleted, but you can just look, look at it. Tons of different stuff here, tons of different stuff here, lots of inquiries. So I think it's fair to say that I'm like the god of getting inquiries off, okay? Because look at this. This is some great case study right here. Capital One inquiry, all these inquiries off, right? So many inquiries. Can you see? Look at the inquiries. They just keep on coming and coming and coming, and we keep on deleting them. Pretty Cool. Now, I'm getting bored of inquiries. I'm pretty sure you are. You want to see some other things that were removed, not just inquiries. You might say, oh, inquiries are easy. Everyone that doesn't know anything about credit repair is going to use that word easy. So if you're shopping for credit repair or you're looking to hire a legitimate credit repair company, you need to understand one thing. Avoid one word. Simple phrases like easy. Oh, that's easy. If the expert says that's easy, that's in no way a professional way of explaining how difficult it is or the skill needed to re remove these things. Okay. It all has to do with precedent. If you have no precedent, then it's, it might be difficult and you might have the winning game plan, but it still could be difficult. What is going to happen when this stuff becomes difficult to remove? What are you going to do? Everyone thinks and assumes it's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. Well, if it was so easy, why don't you do it? And how come it's not done? There's a reason for that. Think about that. Everyone has their own bias and they just want to delude themselves into thinking this stuff is going to be removed quickly when in actuality, it just might not, even if you hire the best credit repair expert. No one's going to tell you that because everyone on YouTube just wants to market themselves and acquire clients and wants to bash other experts or businesses when they really need to focus on their own craft. A new lease on life. If you paid $750 or $2,500 to get a new lease on life, I'd say that's a justifiable payment for that. Think about it. It takes seven years. If I took away seven years of your financial independence, meaning your dignity on your credit report, you're deemed, you're like the scarlet letter to the, on, you've received the scarlet letter from the banks. No bank wants to lend to you. And you might think, oh, I don't need credit. No, no, no. I mean, if you're a loser, if you're a broke loser that has no vision and has no goals and doesn't want to invest or buy a home or do the things that he needs to do, start a business, you might say, well, uh, we're not business owners. Well, even if you're not a business owner, you need to have credit, especially if you don't have the cash to buy a home, you know, the American dream, you can just be stuck paying a landlord for the rest of your life and you will not be able to get financing. You need to borrow from the bank. Why are the richest 
most successful people in the world borrowing other entities' money. Elon Musk borrows money from people. And you, with your big ego, thinking, oh, I don't need credit. I don't need to borrow because you're broke. You need to get out of that broke mentality. If you want to be rich and abundant and successful, change your mentality. Change your mentality. Life will become better when you change. That's the first step. I don't like to take on clients that don't get, understand this because, number one, they're unappreciative. They blame other people. And it's only a matter of time where they say, oh, well, uh, you didn't do anything for my credit. The house always wins, usually. They're willing to give you money because they know they're going to get it. And it's completely legal. I'm willing to take your money as a client because I know I can at least adhere. I can at least accomplish my satisfaction guarantee on pen and paper. That way I can keep my profit. Your, your score might not increase, but if we remove negatives and your, your score increase maybe 10 points, guess what? On the piece of paper, you don't qualify for a refund. And it's only shitty losers that would ask for a refund, okay? I have clients that pay me $3,000, $4,000. And it's taken seven months to get traction on their file. Meaning, I'll give you an example. One of my clients, Richard, okay? Charged him $3,000. It's actually paying me more to do more work for him because it's you know, taking more of my time. It's more complicated. One of the bureaus was like almost clean but the other two were lagging. In a situation like that, it's like he still can't make any moves. But do you think he's giving up? No. We got one bureau clean, nearly. Let's then we'll strategically work on the others. Ladies and gentlemen, it could take that long. You have to realize this is not something that happens overnight. What are you expecting? And are your expectations reasonable? Are you qualified enough to understand how long this is going to take? I know people online, on YouTube, Instagram, and on social media, it's their job to get you with the hook in their social media and get you acquired as a client. When you have bad credit, you're put into a box. You're put into a classification where no bank wants to deal with you. They know how you act. They know how you borrow. And you're just a loser to them. That's how the banks view you. There's no emotion. There's no empathy when dealing with banks. They don't care. They only care about their money. Wake up, people. If you want to start being more successful, you have to disassociate yourself from all the subprime category lenders out there. Do not do business with them. The fact that you might be desperate and think that, well, I'm late on this bill. I'm late on that bill. Let me borrow a loan. No, no, no. Don't do that. You want to borrow money when you don't need it. That's the problem with you guys. You guys always borrow money when you need it. And when you need it, it's because you don't really have the means to pay it back. And that's when you dig yourself a hole. On your credit report, you have to have high credit limits, high level credit cards, and you have to keep your balances, your usage very low, below 6%, 7%, definitely below 9%. And what that's going to do is that's going to build the image that you don't really need credit and you're responsible. You don't want to seem like you're a desperate borrower that's in a bad financial situation. You have to change it, okay? It's like if you want to get a girl that's a nine, she has to know that tens want you. Then you automatically get the nine most likely. But if that nine knows, oh, you're just a loser and all you get are fat chicks that are twos and threes that just have no self-standards and you don't have any self-standards that you'll just basically fuck anything. Well, guess what? She's not going to respect you and she's not going to view you as a high level guy, meaning a guy that has a nice body, that has a six pack abs, a guy that's above six foot, that guy that makes above six figures and goes to work and takes care of his health and his money and actually is a good person, a contributor to society, meaning he donates money, he goes to church and he's not a fuck boy. Even though other women want him, he's still not a fuck boy. That's a high value man. All the girls want that type of guy, like multi-millionaire status. All right. So that's a little insight on there. It's the same type of hypergamy with the banks. Everything that's related to humans is governed and or is ordained by human nature. Everything is psychology. Everything that you do in life, especially in business, is based upon human psychology behavior because humans are the biggest variable. So these banks 
and these institutions want to mitigate risk and understand how predictable you are. You want to be predictable on paper. When the bank looks at your credit report, you look like a winner. And there's a way to do that. That's why people pay me thousands of dollars to coach them one-on-one -on -one every single month and show them these insights that I have worked on for the for the many years of being in this business. I've been in this business for many, many, many years, like 10 years. So let's go to another report because this is boring the shit out of me. Like I said, guys, for me, this might be exciting to you, but for me, it's like a, everything happens every single day, right? It's like nothing new to me. It's like waking up. Okay, we got someone's credit cleaned. Okay, what next? Okay, Fatim. Fatim Wasim, she is one of my superstar clients. Fatim, if you're watching this, shout out to you. You're awesome. You've been an amazing client. I don't have to remind her to pay me. She just pays me every single month. Awesome client. She's a winner. Look at her credit report. Tell me she's a fucking loser. No, her score is higher than yours. Why? It's because she stayed on my YouTube channel and she listened to me. Listen, this is all you need. I'm not going to bash any other expert, but if you've stumbled upon this channel, you should stay here because you don't really need to go anywhere else. There's no excuse. I have two programs for you. If you don't have money to pay me because I'm not cheap and you don't want to deal with a cheap expert, the best burger in town is always going to be like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. The cheapest burger in town, McDonald's, is cheap because it's not, it's like aborted human fetuses inside that burger with soy made in a, made in a lab. If you want to eat that and pay like a dollar, 49 for a burger, that's what you're paying for. In this world, ladies and gentlemen, you get what you pay for, but also a scam artist can rip you off. But we, we're not a scam here. This ain't a scam. This is like real results that we're showing here. Her score is 745 on Equifax, 762 on TransUnion, and 767 on Experian. Where the fuck is scam in this I don't like to share people's full names, although a lot of my con content does. Because I don't want people to stalk them. You can see that this is her report, and I don't think she wants to get calls from random people, right? And I'm not going to put her email address. Her name is enough. You're like, I didn't plan this out. Okay, so let's go to another customer here. I don't even know these people. Tavares? This is from a while ago, but look, ooh, 118 points increased. I increased this person's score, 118 points, 113 points, and 78 points across the board. You can look at that right there. This is from an earlier on client. I don't know what program they joined. I got too many clients. I'm telling you, I don't know all the names. There's just too many people. If there's over like 200, 300 people, I'm going to forget their name. That's too many people for me and my brain. I can't, I can't deal. That's like a system overload right there. All right. Two items deleted. What are they? Bureau. Oh, Community Bank. Victoria. Victoria's secret. It's not a secret anymore. I'll give you another example. We can look at uh, Mr. Ken. Ken, another superstar client. Love this guy. He was referred by someone. So either he was referred by someone or someone referred him. Just a common example. I have so many clients, guys, that I don't really know who they are. But I get them results. I don't care. Okay. Doesn't matter. When you get people results, you can charge. You can do what you want. And, you know, some people give me bonuses and stuff like that. I don't even want to tell you how much they pay me. Uh, but it does happen. So if you want to donate to Andre, help me out. This is a tough business. not easy. Okay. 755, 714, and 767. All right. Look at that. Ain't no scam here. Ken, Ken Hurley is his name. 700, guys, look at this. This is, this, this came in today. This just came in. Oh, sorry. Three days ago on the 15th, depending upon where you're at in the world. All right. Inquiry select portfolio servicing. Oh, what's that here? Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Select portfolio servicing. How, that's a collection, right? Let's reference the credit report to make sure. Select portfolio servicing. Oh, wait, 
No, it's a mortgage account. It's not a collection. Easily to be confused as a collection like Midland Funding or Portfolio Recovery. That portfolio gives it away. That was the after report. Now let's look at the before report. You can see right there the late payments on the old report. The dates are there. And there you have it. We remove the late payments. And after a while, you do it for 10 years. It's like nothing new is going to happen. We work on a file and we work on tons of files. We get it cleaned. Some files take long. Some files take really quick. Some files are like kind of normal. And then some clients are just like quitting within like the first week, right? You have a three-day cancellation period, guys. So after that three-day cancellation period, if you don't cancel, guess what? You're going to have to continue with the program, right? And if you don't, then don't complicate things. Don't complicate things. If you don't want to join, then kick rocks. Get the fuck off my channel, right? We're here about cleaning files. There's no corners cut here. There's no BS. These are the results. We got plenty more. Clear, Ken Hurley and uh, this select portfolio servicing of how credit repair cloud being inaccurate because select we all know portfolio recovery company that's it portfolio recovery company select portfolio services they're collection agencies right but actually let's check to verify that let's look at the report look at that it's actually a mortgage account Right there, it's a mortgage account, not a portfolio. I thought it was a collection agency. I was like, oh, is credit repair cloud being inaccurate like these idiots are saying, these liars, <laughs> morons. Uh, no, it's a mortgage account you guys can see here, clear as day, that's the report. This is the after, you can see. Look at the dates, guys, right there. And now let's pull the other report here. This one, this is the before, this is the old report, see? Oh, oh okay, no. Had a 30, 30, 30 on there. We removed those late payments for them. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Okay, let's look at some other people. Tammy, is there anything you want to say to anyone that's watching? Yeah, I just uh, like to say that uh, people uh, need to be very patient in this program because we, uh, we are not a, I mean, any magician. So we need time to fix the credit. So Tammy, so you're base, so you're basically doing all the work, and I don't know how to repair credit. Is that what's going on? <laughs> no, I mean I learn everything from you. So when we hired you, so just to be transparent with you guys, so I was looking to make, I was looking to expand my business, as every business owner should. You don't want to be the owner of a business and be doing everything yourself. No, that's just ridiculous. That's not a business, okay? If you have a skill in life, you need to pass it to other people. But that's why I have employees. They're loyal. They're like a family. My business is my life. And I hired Tammy because he's an honest person. Uh, there's very few people that are honest in this business. Tammy knows. Tammy knows that there's people, the clients that lie. And anyone that says that I'm a liar and scam them, they're also saying Tammy is a scam artist too, but that's not the truth because Tammy, would you work with someone that's a scam artist? No, never. I'm, I'm also, uh, this is three, three years with you, almost three years. So Tammy's been working with me for three years and my clients actually know him and they we see the, we see the uh, disputes that we send and everything. So I, Tammy worked with other credit repair companies that I cannot mention. Um, it's not fair to me to mention them, but he's worked with big names. I, I kind of uh, took Tammy from them, I guess, but he worked with some big names out there and I wanted to work with him because I thought he was good. Now, when I hired Tammy, he was with a group of, do you remember that other people that were uh, in the trading session, Tammy? Three years ago, remember? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, her name is uh... Jenna or something and a couple others. 
Yeah. Just Philippine lady, Philippine lady. Yeah. And the other guy. Yeah, they can be same people come and go. And